Hi all, welcome to this video tutorial for Embedded System. In this tutorial, we will be looking at the topic Embedded System Design Process. Embedded System Design Process is very simple and very easy topic. So I am dividing this topic into four parts. First one is Embedded System Design Process. Second one is the steps of design process. Third one is what are all the major goals of the design process. Fourth one is the task in every design process. First, we are uh, in this section. It provides an overview of the embedded system design process aimed at two objectives. So, so for what we are designing an embedded system. What all are the benefits that we get through this uh, while we are designing an embedded system. So first factor, it will give the introduction to the various steps in embedded system design. So what means that uh, who all are working in this embedded system design process, they get an introduction. What all things that they, ne they need to do or what all are the different steps that they need to do. All these are get through this designing a embedded system. Second factor, it will... It, uh, it will allow us to consider the design methodology. What all are the design methods that we are using? All these can be identified through this method. Design methodology is important for three reasons. Mainly three reasons by uh, uh, three reasons uh, other for design for considering the design methodology. So first one, um, it allows us to keep a scorecard on a design to ensure that we have done everything we need to do. So uh, it means that uh, it maintaining a scorecard. What all things that we have done or what all things that we uh, haven't done, all these things can be identified by maintaining a scorecard. So, uh, what all things I am giving an example that we have a progress card, isn't it? So, that progress card consists of so many factors, our curriculum, our um, uh, education details, all these things. So, all these things should be filled. So we can identify whether we haven't done anything or uh, uh, we have done all these things or we can identify what all things that we have done. So such as optimizing performance or uh, while we want to done performing uh, the functional test. All these things can be identified by maintaining a scorecard. Second one, it al hel allows us to develop the computer aided design tools. So CAD tools can be made maintained by considering the design methodology. Third factor, it make, makes it much easier for the members of a design team to communicate. So we have a design method. So who all are working, they know what the design methods and what all are the different steps. So they can communicate easily. So these are all are the benefits by uh, using the design methodology. Next one, it's, it is a very simple process while we are designing an embedded system mainly it has five steps what all are the five steps first one requirements second one specification third one architecture fourth one components fifth one system integration so i will explain it very deeply but still i will explain a overview about each topic overview about each topic uh, before that I will explain there are two process what all are the two process from requirements to system integration this is a top-down process system integration to requirements that is a bottom-up process top-down means we are considering the requirements of the user first then we forms an embedded system but in bottom-up process, we are considering an embedded system. Uh, in uh, we will consider an uh, embedded system like that. Then we consider the requirements. So these are the two process. First of all, I am explaining the requirements. Do you know uh, while we are designing an embedded system, like uh, if you consider a washing machine, what all the requirements that the user want, like uh, shape or uh, how much quantity that it requires all these are the user needs that is about requirements specification means that 
it's a more detailed description of what we want it should be documented by specification so all these are the users need and uh, all these uh, things that we need is about is mainly documented in specification part and how the system behaves not how it is built like that mm, not its appearance how it's working or it's all internal things all these are included in this specifications so requirements is only the users need specification is in the viewpoint of the who are uh, the technicians who are working for making that all these uh, they will consider the requirements of the users also and then they forms a specific documentation about what things that they want to build architecture means uh, by considering this specification we will maintain uh, we will uh, maintain a architecture about the system that we want to develop fourth one is our components what all the components that it needed okay uh, hardware components like that all these are considered in this component parts fifth one is our system integration system integration means combining the hardware components and the software parts that means the programming parts all these are combined in the system integration so these are the an overview about the embedded system design process so mainly the five steps requirements specification architecture components system integration mainly from requirements to system integration that is a top down process system integration to requirements that is a bottom up process this is very simple and very easy topic these things that we want to know more detail so the above figure summarizes the major steps in the major steps in the embedded system design process in this top down view we start with the system requirements i have already said that system requirements means a what all things that the user need is considered in the system requirements in the next step that is specification we create a more detailed description of what we want the specification states only how the system uh, how the system behaves not how it is built so more detail uh, the user will say these all things are that we want so the more detailed description of what we want is uh, specified in the specification part now only how the system behaves and not how it is built not its appearance all internal parts and what all things are needed is in described in the specification part next one is developing the architecture the details of the systems internals begins to take shape when we develop the architecture architecture means the overall uh, overall structure of an embedded system that should be explained in this architecture uh, next one is components which gives the system structure in terms of large components once we know the components system structure in terms of large components what all are the components that we were using next one is uh, system integration we need we can design those components including both software modules and any specialized hardware we need is maintained in this based on those components we can finally build a complete system so after getting all these details we can develop an embedded system in this section we will consider the top down design another method is a so uh, first of all i explain from requirements to system integration so it is a top down process another method is a bottom up view in which we start with the components to build a system so what is the system that we want to build it is considered from that to build a system that is considering first bottom up are represented by the dash line arrows so bottom up are we are representing it through a dash line arrows we need the bottom up design because we don't have perfect insight into how later stages of the design process turn out uh, because uh, whether we are designing an embedded system we don't know whether that system while we start from requirements up to system integration what will be happen we don't know whether it will complete or what we have no aim at all what the final product is so we use bottom up design because we don't have perfect insight into how later stages will happen so decision at one stage of design are based upon estimates of what will happen later if our results are incorrect so we don't know whether that uh, system is uh, uh, 
if our results are incorrect we need to backtrack and amend our original decision so uh, we don't know the results uh, so we will start from requirements uh, then up to we reach up system integration so that means it get incorrect so we need to backtrack and amend our original decisions to take new facts into account so uh, we don't know so what all efforts that made by this uh, workers will be lose so bottom up process is a very easy process for them because they have no experience about that so they uh, the results become incorrect so if we have less experience we have with the design of similar system so uh, less experience we will done it with bottom up approach the more we want to select the bottom up if we have less experience we want to select bottom up design system okay next one what all other different goals of the design so we know that after while we are designing a system what all are the benefits or what all the goals what can be achieved by designing a system first one is manufacturing cost so first of all we are designing a system we can identify what is the cost okay what is the manufacturing cost we can estimate okay so first one is manufacturing cost second one is our performance what is performance both overall speed and deadlines so what is the speed and what is the deadlines all these can be identified by performance next one is power consumption how much power it need so all these can be identified by designing an embedded system okay so first one is what is the cost second one is our performance third one is power consumption so these three are the different goals of the design so manufacturing cost performance and power consumption so it's very easy here yeah? so we can study it now itself that is manufacturing cost performance third one is our power consumption so design process while we are dis, uh, designing a process what all are the different tasks there are three tasks first one we must analyze the design at each steps to determine how we can meet the specification while we are designing is uh, system so we must analyze we want to analyze the each steps whether it can meet the specification so specification means what all are the needs that we have done so after designing a system it is not uh, meeting the uh, requirements or specifications uh, it will be not it will not work so we want to check whether that uh, meeting the specific whether that meet the specifications at each at each step of the design process second one we must then refine the design to add detail we must refine uh, we must then refine the de design we must refine the design uh, then uh, while we are refining the design we can get the detail about it we can add it to it and we must verify the design to ensure that it still meets all system goals such as cost speed and so on so there are different goals we have already explained that what are the goals cost speed and that performance all these things these are the goals whether while we are designing all these are meet or not uh, so all these are checked while we are designing a system these are other three step three tasks that we want to do first uh, at each step uh, at uh, at each design steps we want to determine whether we are meeting the specifications second one we want to refine the design to add detail third one to ensure that it still meets all the system goals such as cost speed performance and so on so first one determining to whether it meet the specification second one we want to refine the design to add detail third one whether they meet the goals such as cost speed performance etc so video summary means here is what we learned is embedded system design process what all are the different steps in design process what all are the different goals of the design what all are the tasks that we want to done in each design process Thank you.